Hello, my name is Dr. Faraj Edher and I'm a prosthodontist with the Digital Dentistry Institute. Today I'm going to be showing you how we can utilize the TRIOS intraoral scanner to take both tooth-based impressions and implant-based impressions. So let's start by taking a look at the indication screen here on the TRIOS scanner. If we take a look at the right side of the screen, we see the case overview. And over there, we can review the indications that we've selected. So in our case, we're putting monolithic zirconia crowns on 2.5 and 2.7, and then we're creating a screw-retained crown on implant in the 2.6 region. Right under here, we have the additional scans. These are very useful in some of these implant cases. In these additional scans, there's the emergence profile option. We're going to select the emergence profile option to allow us to record the emergence that we've already established in the patient's mouth, whether that's using a provisional crown or using a custom or standard healing abutment. We can then go to the next screen and what will pop up is the actual scanning screen. So what we'll see here are the scans that we've indicated. We have an opposing scan, we have a scan of the arch that we're interested in, and then we have a scan of the scan body. And then we take our bite scan to bring everything together in the correct jaw relationship. So let's, let's start with this lower scan over here. So at this point, we're going to take the opposing quadrant impression. And now whether we're taking an impression for study models or for an opposing model or for the actual indication itself, there are certain guidelines we can follow that'll make that scan more predictable. What I typically do is I'll start on the occlusal surfaces and try to capture the occlusal surfaces of the area of interest. Now as we approach the midline, I'll tilt over to the lingual surface when we're working on the mandible. The reason being, that's where the tongue is more likely to get in the way. And once we've captured the lingual surface, we can then slide over the occlusal surface again, distal of that last molar, over to the buccal surface and capture that as well. What we see here is the completed scan of the opposing quadrant. At this stage, we're able to utilize the trim tool to get rid of any areas or soft tissue that is not very useful. And what this does is it reduces the chance of it interfering when we take our bite scan, but also trims the file down so that when you're sending it to the lab, it's more compact and easier to use. So at this stage, we can go to the next screen, which will take us to the upper impression. So what you'll notice now is that the screen shows two upper scans. The first is an upper scan and the second one says upper scan body. And the reason there are two upper scans are because on the indication page, we've identified that we would like to take an emergence scan. So what that means is that for the first upper scan, we'll have our patient in this situation over here, which is we've removed the healing abutment or provisional crown, and we're ready to scan the emergence profile prior to inserting the scan body. So again, we follow the same protocol where we're capturing the occlusal surfaces. We're paying a lot more attention at this stage to make sure we capture all the margins on those crowns. When we get to the anterior region, it makes it easier to capture everything if we start tilting the scanner tip in this rainbow motion before moving down to the palatal aspect, capturing the palatal surfaces, making sure we're capturing the distal on that canine because that's going to identify our proximal contact and making sure that we capture all the margins on those crowns. We're then moving to the buccal aspect, again ensuring we capture all of those margins, capturing the emergence profile there where the implant is. At this stage, when we review our impression, we can see that there are certain areas that we have to go back in and scan. So we've captured the distal aspects nicely, but we need to go back in and capture the mesials to get more information there. So at this stage here, there are a few options and tools we can utilize because we are scanning tooth-based crowns. Number one being, we can take high resolution scans of the margins. We have to mark the preparations first. So we'll identify where 2.5 is, where 2.6 is, and where 2.7 is. And after that, we can go to the high resolution option and rescan just those margins in a more high definition format. So what you'll see on the screen is that this is zoomed in quite a bit more, which allows more details to be captured during the scan.
Now that we've captured the margins in a more high resolution scan, we're also able to use the, the lock surface tool, which is found in this tool tab under lock surface. And what that allows us to do is zoom into the areas where we've retracted the soft tissue and captured the margins and lock those surfaces so that throughout the rest of our scan, if that tissue starts to collapse, this part of the scan is unaltered and the margins will still be very clear. So we're just locking the surfaces around those margins and soft tissue. And what we'll also do is we will lock the surfaces around the emergence profile that we've captured. Because again, as we take the time to insert the scan body and retake the scan, that emergence profile might start to change. So we've locked those surfaces and are now able to move on to the next scan, which is the scan body scan. At this stage, what we do intraorally is we insert the scan body into the implant. Before taking the impression of the scan body, we'll go to the trim tool. And as you see, it automatically trims the area around the impression. But what we'll do is we'll ensure that it's trimmed away all signs of that connection, just so that it doesn't interfere with that scan. That looks pretty good. Once we're at this stage, we can go ahead and scan the scan body. We'll start at a point that is common between the two scans. So I'll start at the premolar site to initiate the scan. And once the scan's initiated, I'll move over the scan body and make sure that we capture all the surfaces of the scan body. So what we'll see at this stage is we've captured the scan body. Last but not least, what we want to do now is capture a accurate jaw relationship record, which will bring the upper and lower scans together in the correct bite. So once the patient is in that accurate jaw relationship position, we'll take a buccal bite scan. And what we're looking for is to capture enough of both the upper and the lower dentition to allow the software to merge both of those files into the correct occlusal relationship. At this stage, we're done with our scan. If we go to the Analyze tab, the scanner will process that entire scan and allow us to take a look at the upper and lower quadrant scans in the correct jaw relationship position. And what you'll see here on the right side of the screen is we're able to insert the scan body scan as well. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions about intraoral scanners or scan bodies or anything really related to digital dentistry and implant dentistry, please feel free to contact us at the Digital Dentistry Institute. Our website is www.ddidental.com. You can also find us on social media under DDI Dental.